Sean Payton addressing the future of quarterback Russell Wilson. Look, they they got dragged. And it's funny, so many of the people who were crapping on Russell Wilson last year were fighting for him this year because of this perception that the Broncos in some way wronged him. The Broncos did not wrong Russell Wilson when they benched him with two games left. And I think it's legitimate to make decisions like that to try to keep a guarantee for injury becoming a full guarantee because a guy's got a sprained ankle that doesn't heal by the middle of March and then you're stuck with another $37 million in fully guaranteed payment. Derek Carr got treated worse than Russell Wilson, frankly, because he had a $40 million guarantee pulled out from under him during a window that is supposed to be respected where you're not supposed to cut the guy right after the Super Bowl. That's just for funding rule purposes. Wilson's is fair game. So I think the Broncos are just being careful now. There's no way they pick up this contract. There's no way they pay him another $37 million fully guaranteed in 2025 salary. You're not going to keep digging this hole. It was a bad trade. It was a bad contract. And it would be a bad idea to not move on from Russell Wilson before that next $37 million payment goes from injury guaranteed to fully guaranteed. And they're just being diplomatic at this point about it. That's my read on it. There's no way they're keeping him next year. And there's no way he's going to do anything that they would want him to do to try to work out a solution, redo your contract, move your guarantee date from this year to next year. That's what they tried to do back during the season. And it blew up into a big mess where, you know, the union got involved. So I just, I think, I think Peyton already has decided this ain't working and we're just going to be tactful about how we separate. Yeah, I, I think so too. Uh, I, I mean, one, I think uh, maybe holds out an outside chance that some team would want to trade and get him, even though I think that's, you know, not going to happen once you kind of dig in, you know, you know, the other thing too, like what you talked about with, you know, people, I, I don't understand. It's the NFL. I mean, he's, he's getting 40 over $40 million a year. You know, they weren't winning games. He was being managed to a degree to where the stats are misleading. I mean, the, the, so so what, what what do people want? I don't understand what they want. Like, it's, this is a business. This is cutthroat. He's being paid handsomely for it. They didn't think he was up to task. This is one of the greatest offensive coaches in the history of football. He kind of knows quarterback play. Like, the people who talk about that and all that, I want to be like, what what are you talking about? Like, I don't understand it. And you're right. There's a lot of them talking out of both sides of their mouth that were mouth that were crapping all over Russell Wilson last year. So I don't really get that either. But, yeah, it feels like that. And, like, I'm with you. There is no freaking way Russell Wilson's back to be the Denver Broncos quarterback next year. They made that move a few weeks ago knowing that when they made that move, it was over. It's over. Right. I mean, Sean Payton doesn't he's a guy that wants his quarterback to be the general of the football team. Like we've talked about before, whether it's Belichick or Parsons, they don't want a guy that like the team looks at and like, man, what a what a joke he is. The coach doesn't even really like him and we don't really like him, but he's our head coach. Is that, I mean, come on. There's no freaking way, let alone like we talked about. What's the point of hiring Sean Payton with all his millions of formations and checks and everything like that? So Russell Wilson can run the offense and run like 5% of it. I mean, the offense was scaled down to such a degree when you watch it, it was, it was simple. It was ridiculously simple. So that, to me, all lines up to no way Russell Wilson's back. You there? Did you, did you my security, do it? My, 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 uh, I was getting a call. I was getting a call from my security company, and I just want to make sure the cops don't show up and – you know, oh, tase me or well, something. I, in my uh, own that garage. would be the greatest I, segment in the I, history of this show. I hope that happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, suspicious character reported at 300. I'm not going to give my address. Not that it's all that difficult to find. Don't. I'm not going to dox myself. That's for damn sure. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. There, there's there's just no way. And you know, you touched on some things not that long ago. I don't know if you said them on the air or not. I'm sure you said. I think I did on the air. Yeah. Just the pre-snap stuff. Oh yeah, all we of it. See, right. You know, there, there, some quarterbacks are heavily engaged in the pre-snap stuff, and we saw it. We saw it last year. Yeah, with Nathaniel Hackett, he wasn't able to overcome the deficiencies of Nathaniel Hackett coaching the team, and maybe it wasn't all Hackett. You need to have a quarterback who's going to take over at some point in the huddle and before the snap. I'm not talking about after the snap. Once he gets the ball in his hands, he can make magic. Right. 
But the foundation is laid for the play-in and play-out success of an offense Yes, from the time you get the play to the time you communicate the play, get the team to the line, see what the defense is doing, make adjustments, make decisions, make decisions about whether to check out to a different play which certain indications are going to be certain keys yes. that is going to tell you right. whether or not you need to check out of the play. And we see some quarterbacks who are heavily involved in that process and some who just wait for the ball and they make magic happen once the ball's in their hands, which right. we've seen Russ do. But that's just part of the job. There's a bigger part of the job that isn't as obvious as what you do when you get the ball in your hands. And and I think that may be the core of the yeah, problem right. in Denver. Right. We heard enough about that. I mean, we heard Pete Carroll talk about he wouldn't wear a wristband. The wristband was an issue last year with with Nathaniel Hackett. You know, getting it in and out of the huddle was an issue last year with Nathaniel Hackett. And guess what? It was an issue this year with Sean Payton as well. Yeah, there's too many plays where I, I told you on air through text, all of that, where I went – Wait, guys are not even lined up right, and they don't even ask Russell Wilson where to line up. They look over to the sidelines, and the sidelines is pointing where to do it, right? Or you see Russell Wilson like looking at his looking at his play sheet as he's in the shotgun. Like, wait, what's the play? Let me figure it out. Let alone, again, I I have a pretty good feel for Sean Payton's offense. A lot of it is wired into what I was taught with John Gruden, where I'd watch plays and go, wait, like. Sean Payton would never run this play against this defense. Like, you know this play doesn't work against this coverage, right? But uh, those are things, again, that I think it would looked at to where it was simplified to a degree. And, again, I, I will defend Russell Wilson in that it's not easy. You know, it's, you know, it, it's two different systems in, in two different years he's had to learn. And let alone the one thing that I will say about Russell Wilson is he wasn't wired like this to start his career. And that's where it's a hard decision. He came from a team where it was play defense, hand it off to Marshawn, play defense, hand it off to Marshawn. Oh, wait, it's third and eight. Make some magic. Hey, play defense, hand it off to Marshawn. Marshawn, hey, we're down by three late in the fourth quarter. Get in the shotgun. Make some magic happen, Russell Wilson. But it wasn't like it was the Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady offense where he was like, check, 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 apple, 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 58 Lexus, check. I mean, he wasn't doing any of that ever. So that's a big adjustment. And, you know, Sean Payton He's not willing to continue to work that way there. He wants somebody that can run his offense the way he wants it run, and there's going to be somebody new there in Denver next year. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.